Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're going to discuss, does your operating system matter anymore? Short answer, yes, it does. I don't know for how long, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Obviously, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm a big fan of the Linux operating system, specifically using it on a desktop. So from this point forward in this video, anytime I say Linux, I'm talking about desktop Linux. Okay, uh, Linux, I'll oh, miss some Linux, right? Linux is great. Here's my example, and here's why I'm wondering if that's going to matter after a certain amount of time. Right now, it really does matter. We'll discuss some of those things today. The other day, I was helping my wife with something, and she hadn't updated her computer in a bit. Now, she is using a cheap, bought-off Amazon laptop that I got. I installed Ubuntu on it, which is a Linux operating system, and I installed one app, Google Chrome is literally all she needs. Could she do that on a Windows laptop? Yep. Could she do that on an Apple laptop? Yep, she could, because all her spreadsheets are on Google Docs. All her um, entertainment that she watches is web-based, and she can access those things. If she wants to watch Dancing with the Stars, she can. YouTube TV, that's great for her. That's all she needs. And I'm wondering how many people in the world today, that truly is the definition. So when someone says they want a MacBook or they want a cool PC, most of the time, most users, if they're doing that, it's essentially they, they, they feel like it's either a, a cost-effective purchase or they want the best, so they think an Apple MacBook Pro is the best. But those people really only use the web browser. They really don't use much else. And I'd say there's a fair amount of people. And to them, the operating system already doesn't matter. And we've kind of moved some things over there. You can access a lot of functionality with Microsoft Office on a web app. There are plenty of web apps that you can use that work Pretty great, actually. There also is opportunities to get some hard crunching processing done online. So let's say that you need to render out a long video. You can use a virtual workstation and crunch those numbers or render that video or whatever you need. You pay for a certain amount of time, a certain amount of physical space. You access it through the web. The file gets processed, and then you're able to access it that way so that you could still have a basic device but still have power you're just paying for the power when you need it it's kind of like paying for performance as you go kind of deal and i think that might become more of a model the more and more we go i've considered using that solution so that i could be a little more uh, flexible uh, and a little more mobile with my solution as i'm traveling uh, in southeast asia but uh, for me, at this moment, that's not where I'm at, but I can see a lot of people going to that. I also want to say there's websites like Canva that really do provide a lot of value for a lot of people, including myself. I'll cut something out in GIMP, and I'll upload it onto Canva, and it just saves me a lot of time. And that's just something else that can be used anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. That's pretty cool. But there are also a lot of cross-platform applications if you want to use something like Blender, it is 3D modeling software that you can use on a Mac, you can use on Windows, you can use on Linux. It doesn't care. And there are plenty of software applications that are cross-platform, that are something that you could use. DaVinci Resolve is another one that you can use that's for media production that allows you to be able to make things happen very easily. So at this point, we're like, man, I could use a Mac and I'd be able to do most of what I want to do, or I want to use PC, or I want to use Linux, or it doesn't matter to me. And like I mentioned, if it's someone like my wife, it really doesn't matter. She's found a way to make everything happen for her on a web browser. That's cool, but that's not me. There obviously still is a need for it, and there's a couple of reasons why. And to give a perfect example, let's say you love to game. Let's say you're a video game guy, you're a gamer, you love your games. Well, hardware support really does matter. Now, software support is cross-platform. You can get Steam, for example, on 
Linux, on Windows, on Mac. But there is way more limitations specifically for Mac, less so on Linux, surprisingly enough. So if you want to game, good chance you shouldn't buy a MacBook at this time. That may change at some point. But at this time, that's not the case. You want to make sure that you have plenty of local hardware that is able to render and give you the most FPSs for your buck, right? That's that's what you're looking for. Now, there are some services that allow you to do some gaming online. The NVIDIA, NVIDIA has a service that does that. Uh, Xbox has a service that does that. Maybe at some point, all of that's going to be able to be handled by a web browser too. But as of right now, you still need good hardware to run the games and give yourself the biggest advantage you can. There still is software support. If you want to use the Adobe suite, you got to use a Mac or Windows. You can't use Linux. That's something you can't do. The other thing that makes it important to choose an operating system, not just the computer or how cool it looks. And now the hardware itself is very important, but there is the philosophy behind the operating system, how you do it, how you use it. If you're using an Apple computer, there is a walled garden approach, which you've probably heard at this time. They essentially have very limited pieces of hardware that can work within their system. They have their software that integrates and works well together, but anything outside of that, too bad. They don't want those things working, and in order to get into that walled garden, they make it kind of challenging and difficult. Now, there's a plus and a minus to that. The plus is, is if you stay in that ecosystem, everything tends to work very well and simple and efficient. Mac definitely has go that going for them. You know, you have Windows, and at one point, when, uh, Microsoft really got going because of operating systems. They really don't make as much money on Windows as they used to. Now, you still have to pay a license fee to get Windows on a computer. When you purchase a brand new computer, a part of that cost is that Windows operating system. Because of that, they've started to do some things that are trying to continue to provide revenue. They need revenue to continue to make these products, and they have the largest market share on the desktop in the world right now. So there's a lot of ads in your menus and are going to continue to keep popping up because you're, they're trying to make money in that way. Now, you can process that however you need to or however you want to. That's a philosophy. They are trying to squeeze as much money as they can. And they also provide the biggest hardware support because of how they work. You know, a company will build their software. They will make their software. They'll ensure that drivers can be uh, put on Windows machines, you install that driver, and you move on with your day. And that's a plus for them. So if you want to be able to run the most amount of software that's available to you, Windows is your thing. So even if you're a web browser kind of guy, it's hard to avoid those ads now. And if that's something that you don't like or don't appreciate, then there's another option. There's Linux or BSD. These, uh, their philosophy is kind of like a do-it-yourself a free and open source software kind of way of making things happen. You install those locally onto your computer, uh, or maybe you find a vendor. There are some vendors around the world that do provide Linux out of the box onto your computer, but you install it, you maintain it, you manage it with a bunch of other people in the community who spend their own time programming these pieces of software and the operating system and uh, things like the Linux Foundation, which provides the kernel. And once again, we're talking about desktop Linux here. So there's a lot of do-it-yourself nature to Linux. That's the positive and the negative for it. That philosophy, those philosophies affect right now why you should care about your operating system. Maybe at some point, you get a laptop, and I mean, Chrome OS is as close as you're going to get to this, where you, it is very dependent upon an internet connection. Yeah, there may get to be a point where essentially you have a workstation terminal, and it literally just boots into a web browser and everything you got's there. I don't know. Until that happens, workflow and logic of the design is really another part of why that OS matters. You know, you may love 
that walled garden approach and you like your iPhone and you get yourself a MacBook or a, a Mac Studio or Mac Mini and you boot up and maybe you don't like the workflow. There's a lot of things about it because I've tried not to change too much that just may feel a little archaic or may just you may just not like it. Well, with Max, you're kind of stuck with it, right? There might be some scripts and some things you can do to change a couple of things with the UI, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. And then with Windows, it's a similar situation. There's more flexibility to make some changes with your, your user interface and how files are uh, saved and structured and whether you like Active Directory or not. If you're an IT guy, you know, you probably like yourself some Active Directory in a lot of scenarios. But as a user on a desktop, day to day, your average user, maybe you don't like how it's working. Maybe you do. And if you don't, you have a little more options. You have a little more things. You have the extra flexibility of the most software support out of any operating system. Then you have Linux and BSD. Uh, Linux specifically, there's so many ways to get things done. There's so many ways for you to tweak within that window manager or desktop environment to get what you want to work the way you want. If you just want to be able to just use function keys or hotkeys to be able to do most everything and never lift up your hand from your keyboard, you can Pretty much set that up. If you just want to use a mouse and get yourself around, if you want this one kind of file manager, but you want this kind of desktop environment, you can do that. And so the downside of that is uh, you might break your system. And if you're still learning, like uh, I'm still going through, you might have to start over, blow up your system. You might roll up your sleeves and learn something, right? Does the OS, does the operating system matter anymore? Yes, it does. But I wonder if at some point it won't matter. At some point, we're just going to be booting into a web browser. Who knows? I don't know. But for me, I use Linux. I love it. Uh, check out uh, other videos from my channel. Check out other things. Google Linux. See if it's something that you might be interested in. Let's walk through this journey together. Let's continue to do this Linux thing, and I'll see you tomorrow.